So hello. So in this video, we'll be talking about the formation of ATP in this whole aerobic respiration. So first of all, let's start with the ATPs that are directly formed from the substrate level phosphorylation. So it all starts with the glycolysis, that is the conversion of one molecule of glucose to two molecules of pyruvate in the cytosol. So there we obtain two ATP molecules directly by substrate level phosphorylation similarly inside the mitochondrial matrix there occurs Krebs cycle from there we obtain two molecules of GTP which will be later converted to two molecules of ATP so in total we obtain two and two four ATP molecules by substrate level phosphorylation directly so now we are over with the formation of ATP directly. So let's just look at the NADH and FADH produced in this whole aerobic respiration. So we obtain two NADH molecule from the glycolytic pathway, two NADH molecule from the pyruvate decarboxylation process where two molecules of pyruvate is converted to two molecules of acetyl-CoA. Then this two molecules of acetyl-CoA it is used in the Krebs cycle to produce six NADH molecule and two FADH2 molecule. So in the Krebs cycle we obtain six NADH molecule and two FADH2 molecule. Remember this two NADH molecule is actually produced inside the uh, matrix of the mitochondria. I have given this arrowhead wrong but this two molecule of NADH will be formed inside. So FADH and NADH both are used in the electron transport chain. Actually these two molecules are oxidized and during oxidation electrons and hydrogens are released. These electrons travels through this complexes and ultimately there is a production of ATP. How? I'll be telling it right now. So this NADH is oxidized and also FADH and during this electron transportation is occurring and due to redox potential there is a pumping of hydrogen ions from the matrix of the mitochondria to the intermembrane space so this is the intermembrane space and this is the matrix and during their oxidation and their electron release by these complexes there is a transfer of hydrogen ions as you can see from the complex one there is a transfer of four hydrogen ions from the matrix to the intermembrane space similarly here for the complex four there is also four hydrogen transfer to the intermembrane space and for complex three there is transfer of two hydrogen ions to the intermembrane space so what just happened let's just see right now so first of all take the NADH so NADH oxidation takes place first at the complex one which is designated for the NADH only so NADH is oxidized to NAD plus and there is a release of electrons as I have told so these electrons just tra uh, travel through these complexes so for NADH the order of this electron movement is from complex 1 to complex 3 to complex 4 and for FADH2 molecule it is oxidized in the complex 2 so it skips this complex 1 and goes to the complex 3 and complex 4 so for, uh, so for NADH the order is from complex 1 to complex 3 to complex 4 but for FADH the transfer of electron is in the, is in the order of complex 2 to complex 3 to complex 4. So what happens that for NADH we can see it travels through these three complexes so there is a net transfer of 4 plus 2 plus 4 so 10 hydrogen ions are passed from the matrix of mitochondria to the intermembrane space in case of NADH and for FADH as it skips this complex one so there is a net transfer of 4, pl 4 plus 2 
hydrogens that is six hydrogen ions when it transfers its electron so for NADH as it goes from complex to so for FADH sorry for FADH as it goes from complex 2 to complex 3 to complex 4 so there is transfer of 2 plus 4 that is 6 hydrogen ions in total so let's just remember the value of the hydrogen ions that are transferred from the matrix of the mitochondria to the intermembrane space both for NADH and FADH and it will be required in the, in the production of ATP so now we are clear that in, in case of NADH there is net transfer of 10 hydrogen ions and for FADH it is 6 hydrogen ions transferred to the intermembrane space. So now as you can see this tiny drawn here this is the complex 5. So what is the role of this complex 5? So as I have told you due to this redox potential there is accumulation of hydrogens many hydrogens in this intermembrane space. And when the when this hydrogen ions increases too much, there is a gradient from between the matrix and the intermembrane space. So from the intermembrane space, the hydrogen ions goes to the matrix via this complex five. And when this hydrogen ions goes through this complex five, there is production of ATP. Actually, when four hydrogen ions transferred through this complex five, there is production of one molecule of ATP. So for each four hydrogen ions passed through this complex five, there is production of one ATP. So it is now clear that four hydrogen ions produces one molecule of ATP. So now the gameplay begins. So at from the unitary method, it is very much clear that if 4 hydrogen ions produces 1 ATP, then 1 hydrogen ion will produce 1 by 4 number of ATP. So here the main tricks come. So for NADH, as we can see, there is net transfer of 10 hydrogen ions to the intermembrane space and when this 10 hydrogen ions will pass from the intermembrane space to the matrix via this complex 5 how many ATPs will be produced that is the question so for NADH there is 10 hydrogen ions so for each hydrogen ions there is production of 1 by 4 ATP and for 10 hydrogen ions there is production of 1 by 4 multiplied by 10 number of ATP so that is 10 by 4 means 10 over 4 I want to say 10 over 4 uh, which concludes that 10 divided by 4 means 2.5 so 2.5 number of ATPs are produced in case of NADH so for NADH there is transfer of 10 hydrogen ions to the intermembrane space and when this 10 hydrogen ions passes to the matrix via this complex 5 there is production of 2.5 ATP so for FADH2 molecule there is net transfer of 2 plus 4 hydrogens as the FADH2 is oxidized in the complex 2 then these electrons are transferred to the complex 3 and complex 4 respectively so during this transfer of electrons there is a net transfer of 2 plus 4 hydrogens that is 6 hydrogen ions in total from the matrix of the mitochondria to the intermembrane space so as hydrogens accumulates in this intermembrane space so there is a formation of gradient between the intermembrane space and the matrix of mitochondria so these hydrogens ions are transferred through uh, through this complex 5 to the matrix of mitochondria so during this transfer of hydrogens via the complex 5 there is some production of ATP so for FADH2 molecule there is 6 hydrogen ions in total and as we know that for production of one molecule of ATP we need 4 hydrogen ions to be transferred through this complex 5. So for FADH2 how many ATPs will be produced? So from the unitary method one hydrogen ion produces one over two number of ATP so for six hydrogen ions we have to multiply it with the one by one over four number of ATP so one over four number of ATP when multiplied with this 
six hydrogen ions so now we got six over four that is 1.5 number of ATP in total so for any DH it was 1 over 4 multiplied by 10 because it was uh, transferring net amount of 10 hydrogen ions to the intermembrane space so 10 multiplied by 1 over 4 produces 10 over 4 so it concludes 2.5 ATP so that is how we can calculate the number of ATPs that are produced from NADH and FADH respectively so far we have discussed about the NADH and FADH2 molecule that were present inside the matrix of the mitochondria and producing ATP but we cannot forget that there were two NADH molecule in the cytoplasm of the cell produced by the glycolytic pathway so these two NADH molecule has to produce ATP for that reason they need to enter the matrix of the mitochondria so to enter the mitochondria they need two shuttle system one is glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle another is mallet aspartate shuttle so let's discuss about the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle so this type of shuttle is used in cells like skeletal muscle cells so where this g3p shuttle is used to transfer this nadh onto the matrix of the mitochondria what is unique about this shuttle system is that it bypasses this complex one as this g3p shuttle bypasses this complex one so there is a net transfer of six hydrogen ions which produces 1.5 atp as we have two nadh molecule that will produce 1.5 multiplied by two producing 3 ATP molecule in total by the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle because why it, it is bypassing this complex one and going directly through these rest complexes so now let's talk about the mallet aspartate shuttle so what does this mallet aspartate shuttle does is that it doesn't bypasses or skip any of the complexes so now we obtain 10 hydrogen ions in total in this intermembrane space and producing 2.5 ATP like the NADH molecule so we obtain 2.5 number of ATP and we have 2 NADH molecules so 2 NADH molecule multiplied by this 2.5 producing 5 ATP in total so from a single NADH in mallet aspartate shuttle we obtain 2.5 ATP so for 2 NADH molecule we obtain 2.5 multiplied by 2 that is 5 number of ATP so what concludes that in glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle we obtain 3 ATP in total and in mallet aspartate shuttle we obtain 5 ATP in total so now it is the time to count what we have discussed from the beginning so we have discussed about the ATPs that are directly produced from the substrate level phosphorylation so that is over and we have also discussed that how many ATPs are produced from the NADH and FADH2 molecule and we have also di discussed about the shuttle system the both glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle and mallet aspartate shuttle so everything is over now so now it's time for the calculation that how many ATPs are produced from all these in total so now let's count the total number of ATP that we are gaining from this whole aerobic respiration so in glycolysis we obtain two ATP molecules directly by substrate level phosphorylation in the same way we also obtain two GTP molecules in the Krebs cycle where it is converted to ATP later so in total we obtain four ATP molecules from Krebs cycle and glycolysis but the glycolysis also produces two NADH molecules so this two NADH molecule is produced in the cytoplasm of the cell so for production of ATP it is transferred to the matrix of the mitochondria by some shuttle system so depending upon the shuttle system the cell uses the production of ATP happens so if the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle takes place it produces three ATP molecules and if the cell uses mallet as part of shuttle it produces 5 ATP molecules at the end of glycolysis we get two molecules of pyruvate so now these two molecules of pyruvate is converted to two molecules of acetyl CoA by the process known as pyruvate decarboxylation so during this process we obtain two molecules of NADH which is used to produce 
5 ATP molecules. So now this 2 acetyl CoA at the end of pyruvate decarboxylation is used in the Krebs cycle to produce 6 molecule of NADH and 2 molecule of FADH2 molecule. So this 6 molecule of NADH is used to produce 15 molecule of ATP. And this 2 molecule of FADH2 is used to produce 3 molecule of ATP. So, so now let's sum up the total number of ATP. So before that I would like to tell that there will be two different values of the total number of ATP depending upon the shuttle system that the cell is using. So if the cell is using G3P shuttle that is glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle then we obtain 3 ATP from that shuttle and we obtain 5 ATP from the decarboxylation process. We obtain 15 ATP from the NADH in the Krebs cycle and we obtain 3 ATP from the FADH2 molecule from the Krebs cycle. So in total we are having 26 number of ATP. Like that in mallet aspartate shuttle, if the cell uses the mallet aspartate shuttle then we are having 5 ATP molecule instead of 3. So this 5 ATP molecule and this all number of ATP will be common for both the shuttle system that is 5 from the decarboxylation process, 15 from the Krebs cycle by the NADH and 3 from the FADH2 molecule in the Krebs cycle. So in total there will be 2 more ATP in Marriott as part of shuttle system. So now we obtain 28 ATP if the cell uses this mallet as part of shuttle and if the cell uses the G3P shuttle system then we obtain 16 ATP in total. As I have told you the cell produces 4 ATP directly by substrate level phosphorylation. So if we add this 4 ATP with these respective values then we will get the total number of ATP that the cell is producing through the aerobic respiratory pathway and it is the final value. So if the cell uses this glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle then it is producing 26 ATP and if we add this 4 ATP with it then it is obtaining 30 ATP that is the final value and if the cell uses mallet as part of shuttle then it is producing 28 ATP and again if we add this 4 ATP with it then the cell is producing 32 ATP in total. So this is the way we can calculate the total number of ATP that the cell is producing. It can be 30 or 32 depending upon the shuttle system that it is using. So thank you for watching. I hope you like this video. Stay healthy. Bye.